Hi there, it's Carol Cloutier here from ReclaimingFemininefire.com and I'm here to show you how to make an ancestor altar. And you would make this, an this altar because you want to honor your ancestors. So your ancestors could be those who have passed on, some loved ones that have passed on, they can be also um, guides that you have that you believe are guiding you and that are your ancestors. It could be benevolent uh, grandmothers and grandfathers, whether you know you have known them personally or not. And so it could be animal totems. It could be any um, energy that you believe is benevolent and is guiding you. So it could be um, masters, it could be um, enlightened masters, it could be dream teachers, it could be um, karma lords and dharma masters, it could be your higher self. But today I'm on honoring at this time of year, it's November 1st today, it's right in the middle of Day of the Dead, which runs from the 31st to the 4th of November, I believe. It's right in the center of All Saints Day, the following day after Hallow's Eve, Sam, Samhain. And it's also a time where um, we honor the ancestors that have come before us and we... Uh, bid them adieu, we say goodbye to them for the season so that they can sleep in the winter time. And so I'll show you how to make this altar. First of all, I'll name a few things that uh, that is here. Um, you can see here, I have honored the directions with the color red for the south, black for the west, white for the north, as well as yellow. It's almost transparent, but it's this beautiful semi-opaque um, golden color here for the east. I have water for the south. I have earth here in the west. I have, um, sorry, I have uh, cornmeal here to represent the, the winds of the north. And I also have fire that is lit that you probably can't see on the video, a little candle there for the fire element in the east. I also have um, plants, sacred plants here. There are some lavender, some tobacco, and some sweet grass, as well as some sage here that I bundled with a red cloth. And the red cloth is a sacred color representing the the blood, the, the, the lifeblood of all things. And I have also a fresh here, a fresh white lily that I just love the smell. And so I have that included here in the south. In the west here I have uh, a stone here that is filled with crystals. I got it in Maine. So it's filled with a lot of minerals here. So it represents the mineral world. And, it is, and it's uh, sacred to me. So I have it here in the West. And I also have, again, representing like the metal here, um, a dime, a Canadian dime. And over here I have um, um, a symbol of a turtle so to represent the animal world up here and a star to represent the star nation. And up here I have... A little girl and she represents the human world up here plant world in the south mineral world in the west animal world in the north and human world in the east I have a bit of food here I have some chocolate uh, because I love chocolate and you know ancestors love chocolate <laughs> I have an apple ring and this little tangerine that has been beautifully uh, dubbed or, um, with its little pumpkin head there. 
and I was thrilled with that. So you can see that I've set it up beautifully under a beautiful inner mesa cloth, and this was woven by the shaman caros from the Andes. Um, it's from John Francisco's people. And actually, no, I think he told me he wove this because he was telling me the, um, the symbology and the sacred geometry that is woven here in the cloth. So all of this is being held on a sacred um, mesa cloth, and mesa means table, and it's also uh, filled with energy because of the sacred geometry. And you, here I have this beautiful mask uh, for representing, you know, it's a, it's a sugar skull representing this theme of our ancestors and those who have crossed over, but also representing the beauty and the creativity of uh, this time of year. Now I have, you can see underneath, I have pictures. This is my mom who's passed now two years. This is my sister Jovette who's passed now four and a half years. This is one of my girlfriends. Um, this is uh, one of my friends, David Redwolf. And this is, uh, again, another girlfriend, Monique who was my childhood friend and friend th throughout my early adult. And um, I learned a lot about death through all of these um, people here, all of these important people in my life. And I was uh, really interested in death because I felt I was really insecure and didn't know about death. So we say in the shamanic language that I was stalking death. And after my, um, in my training, my shamanic training, uh, for my three-year shamanic training with the Four Winds, in the direction of the East, we do the death rites. And there I learned about my... Uh, not only insecurity around death, but how death could be very painful for me. We had, we did a lot of uh, experiential work and it was a tough go for me. And I realized I needed to learn uh, more about how to, death can be an ally for me. So Lorenza here was really pivotal in helping me about um, how to, how to make death an ally, as well as all of these that I've mentioned. And the last photo here is myself with my beautiful St. Bernard dog, Gabby, who has also passed on, and so I have included her here. So this is how I honor the ancestors at this time. And, you know, I will do some prayers and some blessings over, I will do some songs. I will drum and do some songs uh, in honor of this altar, these the, the ancestors here. And I'll send a prayer of thanks and um, appreciation. And I will do a number of things over the coming days. So this is one of the things that I can invite you to do here. And this is to start with an altar. And I love working with a circle. The circle is like a mandala. It's a sacred circle that holds everything inside of it. It holds it sacredly. And also in the, this is considered a medicine wheel. So there's not an ending, no ending and no beginning. It's a circle that is never ending. But again, in the this medicine wheel, I have the directions and I honor the the worlds here. So this is something I invite you to try. You can start with a circle if you like, um, or you can start with any surface, but do start a first with a sacred cloth, something you find beautiful and that has meaning for you. And then do gather some photos or elements that represents your ancestors, the beloved ones that have crossed over Bring beauty, bring beauty in, bring beauty in. And if you like, you can bring in the elements. 
things. They're sacred and they're, they, they're powerful. They have powers. So you can bring those sacred elements in. Again, bring color and bring um, items that are sacred to you and have represent something important. Some of the items that I did not include was the sun. And look at this beautiful oh, blown glass piece of the sun. And there's other elements that I didn't bring in, but, you know, this is a great way to start. So I hope this has been helpful for you. And do comment below if you uh, find this helpful and if you've uh, enjoyed this how to create an ancestor altar. Blessings to you and blessings to the sacred time that we speak to where the veil between the worlds is thin and we have access more readily, more than any, any other time, access to the guidance of our ancestors. So this is a great opportunity to, while you're doing this to notice the insights, the wisdom that is coming to you as, as intuition or pieces of knowings, just um, energy that you might be feeling as well as you do the sacred work. Just make sure that you are open to receiving the guidance as you do this. And for now, I send you blessings. Do let me know how you have, have enjoyed this um, video. And I look forward to our next time together. Ancestor blessings to all.